Rosie Koberlein is the CEO. Do you know how to get that? Rosie is the CEO of Long Companies, and she oversees the strategic planning and leadership for all the Long Companies here in town, including their brokerage, mortgage, title, and insurance operations. She's got over 25 years of real estate experience and has served in management positions with Long Realty since 1991. In addition to serving as a board member of our organization, Pima County Real Estate Research Council, she's also a member of Realty Alliance, Tucson Airport Authority, and Southern Arizona Leadership Council. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to ask you all out to take just a moment out of the normal flow of our meeting and help me recognize Rosie for her recent, her recent award. Uh, Rosie has a lot of responsibility in her day-to-day -day jobs, and she volunteers at a number of organizations around town. Recently, she received very special recognition, uh, not only for her business accomplishments, but for her general contributions to the community at large. Since 1952, uh, Tucson has awarded a Man of the Year and a Woman of the Year award to uh, leaders in our community. Uh, these awards are bestowed on folks that have been recognized for their active support of community projects, for aiding those that are less fortunate, and for living in a manner which inspires affection, respect, and admiration. Since 2012, the Greater Tucson Leadership Organization has taken over the control and uh, the dis uh, distribution of these awards. It's no surprise to me, uh, nor anyone on the board of this organization, that Rosie was, uh, Rosie was awarded the 2015 Woman of the Year Award, and I'd like us all to recognize her at this time. I just hope that doesn't count against my five minutes. That's all no. I have to say. Okay, cool. uh, thank you very much, everybody. I, I appreciate the acknowledgement, and it's been quite a a whirlwind of uh, activity here. So, uh, but let's get down to business. Um, so I think we're back to what I would call our Tucson normal market uh, conditions of uh, a balance of inventory, single digit uh, increase in growth, single digit appreciation, low distressed sales. Our distressed sales in the, in the community is uh, under 10%. Um, and we're back to traditional buyers and sellers. I, I'm investors, at least at the rate that we were going before, uh, is really out of the marketplace. You can see here, here's our, our closed units um, from uh, 2013 through 2015 uh, on a monthly basis. So in the beginning of this year, we were a little nervous. I mean, I got to tell you, it was like, oh my gosh, what's happened here that we're, we dropped so dramatically? Uh, fortunately, we have uh, increased that. We've had a 9% increase in residential sales over uh, 2014. Here's our months of inventory. Uh, back in uh, 2007, you know, we had almost 16 months worth of inventory across the whole entire market. Uh, April of 2013, we're down to three months. Either market, you're just as stressed as can be. It, it just doesn't even matter. We're back to uh, a four month uh, inventory. Um, which is um, pretty interesting. It becomes even more interesting when you slice that by uh, dollar value segment. You can see here in our lower price points, we have less months of inventory. Anything under about uh, 400,000, you can see we have a, a really good robust. I don't know what in the world's going on in the marketplace between 900 and, uh, 900,000 and a million. Obviously, there needs to be some price adjustments there. But that over million dollar marketplace, it looks extremely high uh, at 18 months worth of inventory, but it, that's down from the beginning of the year of three years worth of inventory. So we've had some increased sales in that over million dollar marketplace. Um, and you can see here uh, the differences between a seller's market, a balanced market, and a buyer's market. Here's our, our median sales price. Um, we, um, from our low point, of September of 2011 to current, we've had basically a 50% increase in our median sales price. But however, to get back to our high water mark in 2007, you know, that would take another 27% appreciation in value. Um, we've only had a 5% increase in uh, appreciation this year. So, you know, if everything was to go uh, equal, in the future, it would take us about five more years to get back to that high water mark. 
uh, in 2007. Um, here's our uh, interest rates staying low, uh, has really uh, still, we're a very, very affordable market, but you can see what's happened with the appreciation and value because the interest rates have stayed very low. I've gone through these slides very quick because I want to share some information that I got from uh, Dr. Yun, the economist for National Association of Realtors last week at the convention that I thought would be particularly interesting to all of you. There's 87 million millennials lurking in people's and their parents' basements, about, <laughs> about to come out. Um, the oldest is 34, uh, and it goes down from there. The, the issue is, is that what impact will that have on our residential marketplace? I think initially it, it will have some dribble effects on our, on our marketplace because they're going to go into the rental market. Rents have increased significantly across the country. I don't know so much here, um, but that, that is a, a, a big issue. The issue with the, the 87 million millennials is student debt. debt. It is huge. It is just a, a, a big issue in terms of stimulating the housing market here. In addition to that, we have 10,000 baby boomers retiring a day. So there is a significant change in the demographics of, of the housing market of what's going on. We're at a 50-year low of home ownership at 63.5 uh, and 30-year low for first-time home buyers. Not surprising because of the millennials uh, being uh, held back uh, by the recession and their student debt. Student debt, as I said, is, is, is really a, a big issue nationally in terms of what how can we, what can we hand, do to incorporate that and settle that? What's interesting is that there was a time when student debt was not counted towards your credit rating and credit scores or for financing. Today it is. So that really does dampen our housing market. Interest rates, uh, everyone is talking about that they will go up. It's just a matter of when. Uh, inflation rate rise. What the, uh, Dr. Young was saying is that the inflation rate for 2015 has been almost zero. Um, they're expecting that to increase in 2016, mainly because rent, rents have gone up. And in 2000, January 2015, gasoline prices were still relatively low. In 2000, January 2016, gasoline prices are still very, very low. So they're now expecting inflation uh, to now increase. Uh, the solution to affordability and supply, we need some of the rental apartments to start converting to condos, that's for sure, and condo financing, something that you may be interested in knowing. FHA is going to be coming out with an announcement very, very, very soon that they now will count second home owners towards occupied properties in your condo complexes, whereas before it was counted against you in terms of that 50% uh, occupancy. Boomerang buyers, there's uh, 1.9 million boomerang buyers, people who had uh, gone through foreclosures uh, that will be coming back into the marketplace over the next eight years. Case Schiller, um, they're saying that there's going to be a 3.3% increase in home purchases nationally. They're projecting Arizona to be higher than that, which is a really good thing. And then the last thing I want to share with you that they announced is that SBA has, now has a loan program for small builders. If you're out there building, Five or fewer homes, you'll be able to get a loan through SBA. Did I do that in five minutes? Very good. Thank you.